Welcome to the November edition of Del Mar Droid Builders. Tonight we're going to talk about how to hook up and rig a Kyber control to a Maestro and how to hook up a Maestro to a servo kind of from scratch. You're going to need the Palolu Maestro Control Center. You're going to need a USB cable that hooks into your Maestro. Obviously you have to have a Maestro installed. In this case I'm going to be using my transmitter to trigger stuff. I've got the bread pan right, the bread pan left, a slide door. When I hit these two buttons, that's what's going on. Tonight, my goal is to get this device, his Trippo Grip gripper arm, uh, working by programming it with the Polo Maestro. Right now, he's all powered up. I'm going to turn him off. Can you unplug that for me? Just go. Oh, okay. We've got our Maestro mounted right here. Channel zero on the far side near the USB. I don't know if you can see the, I'm tapping the USB connection to it. That's channel zero, and then each set of pins is one, two, three, all the way up to 11. And zero to 11 is 12 total units. So this is bread pan right uh, over here that I want to open the door. And once the door is open, I want to raise the tool and then I want to activate the tool is the, uh, the, the sequence of events. And right now it's not rigged, it's just simply installed. First question you have to ask is how do I put all the servos, where do I put the horn on the servo? So what I usually do, is take a little servo tester, a little battery pack, you plug it in, and then you plug the servo into a mid-range position. So the lifter servo, you can see bread pan right is servo zero. So it is showing fully open here. And if you look at my door, it's not fully open. I need to rig that servo and I'll, I'll, I'll work on that in a second. And that's just a matter of adjusting this, how much uh, of my push rod, in this case, nylon cord is showing. We'll come and work on tuning that. But over here, the next thing is the lifter. And so I'm just gonna plug the lifter into my servo tester. Oh. And you can see that it does its job. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in the middle position. The servo thinks it's at the middle. I'm going to plug this black, red, white, Black is ground. I'm gonna plug that into the first channel, or, or channel one, which is right next to zero, and make sure the black is on the outside of the board, because that's where the ground is. Here's the servo wire for the spinning, and this, these are outrageously long. Usually what I do is when I have a bad servo, I cut its tail off, a connection I can make to uh, make an extending wire, but this was one I had. And we're gonna put in channel two. Right now they're not labeled, just a BPR, bread pan right. This will be lifter right, and then tool right will be probably what we'll name them. Again, look for the black wire, make sure it's on the outside of the board. And we're gonna plug this into channel two, which is the third one over. So now that that's done, we're ready to move on to setting them up in the Pololu Maestro software. Pull the channel settings. Usually I pull them off into its own window to make it easier. And then right, lift, and then right, tool. Just naming them. And its type is a servo. And these min and max are the ranges of the servo. And right now that's obviously that's just the default. And you can set um, all kinds of speed and acceleration and really the servo status. And I'm just gonna leave everything else at default right now. Can't really power it from the USB. So I can put this dome back on and power up the droid. So uh, I've got the droid booted back up so that uh, we can talk to it and the servos can actually move. So this is an interesting point. So I typed in all the new names, but they're not showing up on the status side. And the reason is I had to go apply settings. So click the apply settings, and then that kind of saves it to the uh, Maestro board and its memory. 
So in the status, we can see we have now these four channels, or um, actually, yeah, there's four channels in a row, but nothing's powered, so you have to enable it. So I'm gonna go, and if you heard that, it is now enabled. And what I did before was I set it to the center of the servo range, and servos, uh, typical hobby servos that we're using here will move around 180 degrees, sometimes 170, sometimes it's 90. It just depends on what that servo can do. And typically the mid range is 1500 microseconds. So the way the servo works is, is it pulses um, at a certain wave length or wave or frequency, I guess it's called pulse wave modulation. And the timing between the pulses is what the servo determines where the servo goes. So 1500 is typically in the middle of the servo range, 1500 microseconds. And depending on the servo, it could go as low as 500, up to 2500. Um, that's all servo dependent. But in this case, uh, I tuned it using my servo tuner to 1500 microseconds. Now that I've got my servo on, powered, now I'm gonna start setting its range. So the lifter, if I start moving my servo slider, you can see that it can go anywhere from, if we look here, target, right now I see 1765. And if I go the other way, that, um, oops, did I run off the bottom? Yes. So I went all the way down but I hit the bottom limit and the, the uh, tool's not where I want it to be. So I need to change the limits. The top end limit, let's say about uh, somewhere in here. We want to get, we don't ever want to drive a servo to a hard stop and have it uh, trying to go through a wall. So I'm going to say 1789 and a half is the upper limit. And uh, we'll go over here under Let's see, right lift and say the maximum, not 2000 now, but the 1789, 1789.5. Now I'm gonna hit enter and it's probably gonna go bling because that's not a real number. These are all increments of your, uh, of your frequency. And so it's gonna round it to the closest number that's appropriate. So don't worry that if it changed, uh, it won't let you set invalid numbers. But if we come back here to my minimum, we notice that it was limiting to 992. Well, that's not low enough. So I'm going to set it to 500 as the bottom end limit. And the important thing to do is to hit apply settings here. So now I've reset the range of my servo. And you can see it turned everything off and re uh, set the servo limit. So I'm going to turn the right lifter back on. And we know that it can't go any higher than this because we set the upper limit there. And now we're going to go to the bottom limit. And I think it looks pretty good right there at 854 and a half. So now I'm going to go and put the bottom limit at 854 and a half. 85. 4.5. I probably shouldn't even put the decimal because I know it's not going to be a decimal. And then back to apply settings. So again, it resets the servos. I'll turn it back on. And now I can swing it from limit to limit and it's not going to run into anything and it's not going to hit anything. And it's, um, I can just freely swing it from top to bottom. And that servo is now tuned to where I want it to uh behave itself. So the next step is going to get this tool lifter to do its job. What we're going to do, this is the, our servo that has this uh, piece of filament as its push rod and it wraps it around a drum and that will cause this to open and close as we get this uh, back and forth. So step one is, I don't know anywhere, uh, although I started in the middle, I don't know what range is going to end up being the right spot because I have to tighten this up enough so that when I move the servo, something happens. How I don't know where on this circle that 
quote, something's going to happen because I have to tighten this set screw down to grab a hold of it, but I don't want to grab it yet. So with all that said, let's go over here to the computer and kind of what we were doing before, I'm going to go and set my limits instead of 992, I'm going to set this 500 at the bottom and 2000 at the top or 2500. So now that is going to be a, as much as that server can probably give me because that's the typical range. And I'm going to hit apply settings. All right, so now let's move this servo to oh, 1500. Oh. So now it's in the middle. And now I'm going to say that, let's take a look. If I go to the right on my bar, Oh, it's almost working right there. Oh, wait, I have to get that on the side. Of there. Oh, so, I just need to tighten this set screw um, and take a little bit of the slack out. All right, so I've got this wire uh, pulled tight and I've got the end captured and I will try cycling it and see what happens. So you can see our uh, servo cord is hitting here and it's preventing it from closing. So that means to me is I need to lift this whole thing off, rotate it so when it's fully closed, it looks like that. And right now, as you can see, it's fully opened. And when I try to close it, it, it jams into this other gear. Um, I could just snip this wire here, but then if I ever needed to change a tool or uh, adjust it, I've got no options, so this extra slack's required to, to rig it and install it. So I don't really want to cut this, I just want to move my servo so that it uh, is like that when it's fully closed. If I look at my screen, that's the minimum drive. So that's where I want to command it. I just need to spin it so that the uh, uh, head or servo arm's in a different uh, angle, and then uh, that should work there. So. The way I'm going to do that is going to leave the servo powered, take this off, and then reposition it. As I rotate this, um, I've got too much um, cable, so I have to back off my set screw and then pull this in tight as I remount it. All right. Uh, so. I need to still tighten that. It shouldn't go anywhere for testing though. So that is 991. So this is right tool. Make it 991. Apply settings. Turn the servo back on and see. We don't have to move this one very far. Looks like uh, 1130. The My Store is nice because I can do this all on my PC and see exactly where I want that servo to go and what I want it to do. And um, once I get the limit set, that's step one to creating now a an animation. So I'm going to set this into its uh, default position, which is going to be uh, what you'd expect when you first turn the droid on. The doors doors closed, tool down, tool closed. And then we're going to come over here and I'm going to start an animation. So to do that, we'll go to uh, sequence and we'll go new sequence. And we'll call this, uh, rename this sequence instead of sequence five. We'll, so we'll call Tripo Gripper sequence, which is uh, not a great name. I'll probably think about that later. So step one, is to take the um, status, I'm gonna pull that out into its own window so we can see where we are in the status. Step one is to go save frame and I'm gonna turn all these off because I don't want to have the servos power the whole time, especially if I'm not trying to move them and there's no load on them. So if I go to frame one, it's gonna play for 500 milliseconds, 
which is enough time for things to move. And then step two, I'm going to start doing something. So uh, what do I want to do? Well, first step is to open the door and you can see I'm going to swing this to the full door open and the door is open. And now this is the first step of my animation. And I'm going to save that as frame one. So now if I were to play this, you would see, and I'm going to play, I'm going to hit play sequence and you should see the door open and close. So the first step is its baseline, and the second step is the first sequence. So I'm gonna to go to, uh, now that I've done that, I'm going to take power off of the bread pan right, because I don't want it powered, because it just puts uh, heat and wear and tear and drains my battery. Then I'm gonna use my right lifter and go all the way open. And then I'm gonna save that as a frame. And again, it's 500 milliseconds, and now I'm gonna do something fun. I'm just gonna lower it halfway somewhere. Let's say, I'm gonna say 1400, 1400. And the reason I'm picking a specific number is I wanna come back to that later. So that's set frame three. And then I'm gonna go up to the top again, save that as a new frame and then back to 1400 and again I'm picking that because I want to go to the exact same spot and not just some random uh, place save that as a frame now I've got their attention by waving the tool around a little bit and now I'm going to activate my tool move one area and that's a 876 we'll save that as a frame and then I'll go all the way open okay that is a frame and we'll do it one more time 876 and save that as a frame so our state is we've moved the tool up and down a couple times the pinchers are closed so we're ready to recover and close the tool so we'll put that down to this bottom end and we'll save that as a frame and then we'll depower it Close the door and save that as a frame. And the very last thing I do is I save a frame with nothing powered so that when it's done, uh, servos are, have no load on them. They're not drawing power. They're not drawing, making heat. And it's in a stable configuration. So I'm going to play the sequence. All right, so I got a little uh, problem with my sequencing of uh, my, my tooth is, is chewed up, but um, you get the idea. I'm going to apply settings. Now that's saved. So copy all sequences to script and it rewrote them all and I need to add one line of code to each one. And this is an easy one, quit, Q-U-I-T. If you don't do that, you run into problems. So how do I know where to put quit? You can see each sequence starts with the hashtag and ends with the word return in blue. Right before return, I'm going to insert Q-U-I-T before each one of these. This is fairly tedious, so I try to do uh, my sequence programming all in kind of a block, so I only have to do this once not every time I program a new sequence. So now you can see it goes hashtag triple gripper sequence was what I named it. And that's my last one. And, and to return that goes into some other coding stuff. I don't have to worry about any of that. But I do need to make sure that each, right before each return is the word quit. And just for my OCD, I usually um, make it line up. You don't have to, it's, not going to make any difference, but I just think it looks better and easier to read. Now, why is there a quit there? It shouldn't be. Good, good catch. Ah. Uh, where, uh, that quit is an uh, extraneous quit, so let's get rid of it. And that's another good reason. When your code is well ordered, it's easier to find errors. And I meant to put that one in there, see if you catch it. <laughs> not. 
I've got one, two, three, four, five, six sequences. I'm going to hit apply settings, and that writes them all to the maestro's internal memory. So how do I get that to a button I press on my remote? You notice what's going on here? This door is not closing because one of my sequences is not using the same limits because I tweaked that door in the other sequence. So I'll have to go back and uh, address that. But in the meantime, we got uh, one, two, three, four. Doesn't seem to do anything because I haven't programmed it. So let's program that button. I've got the Kyber control page tuned up here. We have uh, 15 buttons and I have a separate video how I install these buttons. There's also button pads you can buy. That's a different topic. So each button you can program to a sound range and a, a, an animation numbered one through X of the number of animations. I've got two maestros, one his head and one in his body. And we have just installed right tool. Um, I, I just named it right tool. I gave it a couple of different sounds, 30 or 31, so it doesn't do the same one every time. And it's um, sequence number five because it starts counting from zero, I believe, and this is the sixth one, so that makes it five. And then I just threw in one of my random head animations for the uh, dome, then saved it to memory. And now, when I press button number four, it does that. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next month.